Now let's go on to the phone lines again and pick the thoughts of um, a lawyer on what this means for the credibility one and then also the confidence of the Electoral Commission going into the elections later in December. Nana Ajay Bafo has joined us. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, my brother, and good afternoon to your viewers. Right, uh, right from the onset, you were uh, quite livid about the decision of the Electoral Commission to disqualify these number of uh, candidates who sought to be president. But the first question to you would be, what does this ruling mean for, one, the confidence of the Electoral Commission in, you know, uh, executing a credible election, and then also their credibility? First and foremost, to use the word livid, very respectfully, I don't think it's appropriate. I wasn't livid. I disagreed with them. Um, I think, you know, at all material times, I've maintained that they were wrong. Um, they were wrong because they flouted their own regulations. I believe they were wrong because they had, you know, behaved in a manner that was inequitable. And so I thought that it was inappropriate. So the court has made a decision and it is very good. Now, I think that one of the best as one of the um, one of the good things about this decision for me is um the growth of our democratic process um i don't think that as we develop our democracy there will be an institution or any institution that is infallible um all these um you know errors are to be expected but the good thing is that when required the judiciary you know, you know, rises to the occasion, which for me is very significant. Mm. But for the EC, I think that, like I've always maintained, it, it needs to rethink its position. Look, um, in the last, in the last, if you like, um, 12 to 15 months, you have seen a string of cases against the EC. Ultimately, it does not really go well for them in most of the cases. And that is the basis upon which I, you know, I, I stated you know, on your platform various times when I've been interviewed that it's important for the EC to change its go-to-court posture. Because as you go ahead and then you take such a posture and you continue to lose, it is not good for you. But, but you does this, up, does this, as somebody who does not even yeah, but counsel, law, does this dent the credibility at all of what the EC is expected to do going into the elections? I think it is, <laughs> I think that there is a cause to be worried. Because, you see, I am worried particularly because of events in 2012 and thereafter. If you recall, after the election petition of 2012, the MPP may have conceded defeat, uh, may have um, accepted the, de the decision of the Supreme Court. But the general commentary in town was that we, the MPP will not go to court again. Now, when you are conversant or when you have heard this, I think that it, it, it is important that you, you, you hold yourself well in the way and manner you do things, especially, you know, to ensure that whatever you do is in accord with law. Okay. Because the moment they say they will not go to court again, if they are aggrieved, if a person, you know, or we all know that in accordance with our laws, if a person is aggrieved, the place is seek redress is court. Right. But if the person that says he's not going to court when he gets aggrieved, then we should be worried, which is why the EC ought to hold itself better than it has held itself so far. It is not appropriate. I think okay. that anybody who is interested in the peace of this country, you know, most, you know, especially the opinion leaders of this country, they should shift from taking partisan positions. They should shift to neutral positions and start engaging the EC. Okay. I think we should move from the position where people are being requested to go into churches to pray for the peace of this country to the prominent lead, um, religious leaders of this country who are the trustees of the morals of this country, right, but engaging, on, on the same engaging score, stakeholders. On the same yes. score, what would you say? Uh, there are those who are advising that the EC should, you know, forestall further humiliation 
by engaging the other political parties that were disqualified. Is that a position you'd share? I think they should do so. I think, you see, I think that they should do so in accordance with their law. You see, when you look at Regulation 9, sub-Regulation 2 and 3, it is not every error which is, um, you know, susceptible to amendment and alteration. Sub-Regulation 9, 2 or 3, there are, you know, one of them, speaks to errors in relation to the particulars of the um of of the um, what do you call it the presidential nominee and and their subscribers it does not speak to infractions such as you know where somebody chooses um, or, or um, somebody chooses a running mate who is less than 40 years that is an that's a constitutional infraction all right okay all right. and so such a person I mean, I don't think the EC would have to engage such a person because that person's error does not come within what is susceptible to alteration and amendment under the CI 94. Okay. And so I think that, you know, the EC should not talk to just anyone. You okay. understand? It, Thank the you. The EC shouldn't talk to just anyone. The EC should speak to people who come within the CI 94 and not just any presidential candidate. Thank you. Thank you very much for your thoughts on uh, this um, development from the court.